functions on it. Um, let's get this triangle we get set up right. We've got a famous triangle here that we've seen before, um, and it, it utilizes what's going to wind up being a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple is going to be where we're going to have three integers that are going to work within, or, or, or natural numbers in this case, they're going to work within uh, the Pythagorean theorem, right? That we can throw these in there. So three squared and four squared, right? Is going to be our, our way that we're going to get to this hypotenuse, which is going to be equal to uh, five. Now, something for us to keep in mind is an annotation issue. We're going to take this triangle, which is going to be named A, B, C. Something that is also applicable here is we've uh, taken this side, which is side BC, right, capital BC, but rather than knowing it as capital BC, we can identify it by the side that is opposite angle A, which we're going to give it the lowercase uh, version of that letter. So uh, side BC, which is of uh, length three, is going to be lowercase a. Whereas we have here four, which is side AC, it's opposite, right? Opposite uh, B, and that's going to be lowercase b, meaning that five, of course, is gonna be lowercase c. Truly, actually, um, applicable with a squared plus b squared is c squared, right? Now, what's fun about this is that we're solving for the various dimensions. All we were given were two legs here, but we actually have enough information to solve every single part of this triangle. Okay, let's go back to where we have this side three and this side that's four, right? These two legs. If we're gonna go and try to figure out then, what is angle A equal to? We wanna know the measurement of that angle. Well, the two sides we're working with within the three sides of the triangle of the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, A and B are gonna be opposite and adjacent. Remember which trigonometric function that is. So, ka, toa, the one that utilizes opposite and adjacent is the tangent, right? Which is going to be tangent being opposite divided by adjacent. In this case, <coughs> excuse me, the tangent of angle A is going to be equal to three divided by four. Now remember, we had discussed this in the last lesson, how do we actually undo tangent so we can solve for A by itself, angle A. And if you, again, you're gonna look on your calculator, you're gonna find the secondary function, right? You find the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, S-I-N, C-O-S, T-A-N. Right above those buttons, you'll find, um, especially if you have a Texas Instruments calculator, you'll see it in blue or you'll see it in green. Just above tangent, for example, you'll see a button that says this, it says, tangent to the negative one power, okay? That's the inverse of tangent. It bothers me when I hear students say, oh yeah, you divide by tangent to get rid of tangent. That's not what you do here. That's not what's happening. It's like saying uh, you, you, you subtract by divided by four. That's that's not even a thing, right? You're just making up uh, operations at that point, right? That's pretty silly. Um, that is, tangent is the operation, okay? The same way that if we divide something if we multiply that's the inverse operation if we add something then subtract addition and subtraction are inverse operations exponents and roots the inverse of tangent which is its own uh, operation here is going to be the inverse tangent so what winds up happening algebraically is that the inverse tangent of tangent removes that and a is by itself and what it's absolutely perfectly equal to is the inverse tangent of three over four or 0 0.75, right? That's the exact answer. Now, what's it about equal to? Take out that calculator, okay? Punch in, secondary function, then the inverse tangent, and in the parentheses, you're gonna put three fourths. The number that you should get, if you are doing this correctly, and you have your calculator in degrees and not radians, is 36.9. Take a moment, pause the video, and I wanna make sure that you can punch that into your calculator. Inverse tangent 3 fourths equals 36.9. Make sure that that's your outcome. Next, we're gonna figure out angle B, right? So we have angle A, we have side A, side B, side C. We know angle C, right? It's a right angle. Now we've solved for angle uh, A. Let's solve for angle B. So from this angle, Okay, we could use tangent, but look what we did. We actually solved, and we're just gonna do this a little bit differently. Two ways I could set this up. Of course, I could do it with tangent, right? I could find the tangent of B is equal to four divided by three. That's true. 
<clears throat> or I could also maybe use a different trigonometric function, right? Just for practice here. Um, if I were to not worry about A and I actually use B and C, that's the opposite side, B, and the, uh, the hypotenuse, right? That's not an adjacent. Five is going to be the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle, right? Opposite and hypotenuse. <coughs> so, ka, toa. So, opposite and hypotenuse. So is sine, right? So the sine is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Okay? <coughs> In this case, the sine of B is going to be equal to 4, the opposite side over 5, the hypotenuse. If we solve, right, we can either do one of these two. It doesn't matter. If either one of these, when we solve, it's going to have the same results, right? You don't need to do it both ways. In fact, I'm just going to erase the other one. I'm going to do it just with sine. So B, I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. And the absolutely exact answer is the inverse sine of 4 over 5. Now, we need an approximation that's going to be in degrees. Punch that into your calculator, and you're going to get 53.1 degrees. Now, some of you guys, it may have dawned upon you prior to this, but I hope you've definitely seen the connection between these two things. But remember the corollary that we had established. The two acute angles, right, that are in a right triangle are going to be complementary, right? A and B will be complementary, meaning they have a sum of 90. If this guy is 36.9... Punch it in your calculator, 90 minus 36.9, guess what it yields, 53.1. Can you do it that way? Absolutely, why not make your life easy? All right. Let's solve a triangle. I love these problems, some of my favorite trig problems. In fact, this is one of my favorite uh, disciplines of mathematics, maybe my absolute favorite. I like combinatorial mathematics too where we do permutations and combinations just because I like uh, I like those probability problems. Um, but I'm a big fan of these trick problems. There's a lot of practical application here. Let's go ahead and establish triangle ABC. And we have two sides, two and three. Oops. When you solve a triangle, step one, we're going to make a solution box in the top right corner. OK? We already have two of our solutions, right? We have <clears throat> three parts we're solving for. We have two sides and we have one angle given to us, right? We have side A, which is three, and we have side B, which is two, right? And we can get side C, right? So we're gonna have two squared plus three squared is equal to C squared, okay? And that's one of the three things that we're going to be solving for. So we're looking for one side here that we're going to plug in. So we have 4 plus 9 is equal to c squared. 13 is equal to c squared. So um, c is going to be equal to rad 13. That is the exact answer. Now, that's not an answer people usually like to see. They're going to want to see this approximation in decimals. That's fine. We're going to do that to the next 10. Punch in rad 13 in your calculator and you will get 3.6. I have two other parts I need. I'm going to need these angles here. A and B have to be solved for. So we're going to put in angle A, and we're going to solve for angle B. And the best part is once we solve for angle A, we can actually back that out from 90 degrees to get angle B, right? Because the A and B will be complementary. So let's set it up. From the angle, so tangent of angle A is going to be equal to the opposite 3 over the adjacent 2. To get it by itself, we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. Okay. Which leaves A by itself and meaning that the tangent, inverse tangent of 3 over 2 is our exact answer. I must have that. I must have an exact answer in addition to the approximation that when you punch it into your calculator, it will give you 56.3 degrees. I'm fine. But it is an approximation as well. Since A is an approximation, B has to be as well, right? And we're going to, it means something was rounded somewhere. And we're going to take uh, 90 minus that rounded number. And we're going to get another rounded number, which is 33.7 degrees, right? 56, 90 minus 56.3 is 33.7. And that's absolutely fine, OK? Could we solve for the exact answer there? Sure. <clears throat> and sometimes we'll want to, but 
in this case right now, I'm okay with us just working with what's easy and, and using that complement to solve that um, next portion. All right, last one of these problems for today. We have A, we have B, we have C. We're going to solve the triangle, but all we're given is one angle here and one side, 18.4. Same directions, solve the triangle, which we like these problems when they're right triangles. And actually, we'll be able to do this without a right triangle in our next lesson, right? It's pretty, pretty crazy, but we can. We have enough information here to deduce what every single part is of this triangle, okay? First thing, we need another angle. So we're given two of the angles, we need angle B. Well, remember, that guy was complementary, right? So angle B is gonna be 90 minus 41, so it's exactly equal to, not an approximation, 49. <clears throat> the other two parts we need to solve for, though, are going to be sides A and sides B. Well, what will those be equal to? Let's go from the angle, correct? We're going to go A to solve for side A, and we're given the hypotenuse. What two parts of the three? Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. What are the two parts we have? Well, we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse, so ka toa, so opposite and hypotenuse means the sine of the angle 41 is equal to the opposite A over the hypotenuse for 18.1. We're going to solve for A, so we're going to multiply by 18.4 on both sides. And remember, sine of 41 is just a number. It's some decimal number. If you, if you forget that, punch that into a calculator, right? Punch sine of 41 into a calculator. It's going to give you some uh, decimal number, and that's just what it is, right? It's It's... Some one of these, you know, it's like a radical, um, uh, like when you punch rad 13 into your calculator, right? It gave you some decimal number. Same thing for sine 41, okay? And that's what A is. That's it. That's your answer. What we need to do, though, is figure out what's that equal to as a side. So we punch that into our calculator. And, of course, you should get about 12.1, right? 12 point, I think it's 07, which rounds 12.1. Side, let's solve for B, right? <clears throat> well, from, from that angle, again, from the angle, which is 41, we'll take the cosine of 41, okay, for the adjacent B that we don't have over the hypotenuse, 18.4. Multiply both sides by 18.4. We're going to get the cosine, 18.4 times the cosine of 41, and that is equal to B. Punch that into your calculator, and B is about equal to...